Hi there again. In this lesson we're going to see how to construct an ellipse. We're going to use a method known as the concentric circle method. I'm going to draw an ellipse with a major axis of 100 and a minor axis of 70. So for a major, ex major axis of 100 I'm going to open the compass up to 50 millimeters. The radius, so I'll get a circle with a diameter of 100 millimeters, as much as my major axis. Now, if I want a minor axis of 70, I'm going to open the compass to 35 and draw another circle which is concentric to the first one, that is, has the same center as the first one. But this time it's as wide as the minor axis. So two circles concentric. I'm going to divide the circle into 12 parts. So I'm going to get these will help me get the 12 points of my ellipse. Each of these divisions will help me to get one point of the ellipse. Right, so I've got that so far. So this is 70 millimeter diameter, this is 100 millimeter diameter. I want a major axis of 100, a minor axis of 70. Now, now depending on how I want the ellipse, if I want a horizontal ellipse or a vertical ellipse, it changes the construction only slightly. Now let's start off with a horizontal ellipse. So it's always wise to mark off the four points of the major axis and of the minor axis. So you get an indication of how your ellipse is going to be. So those four points show me that I'm going to get a horizontal ellipse that is long ways like that. Now I need to take a vertical line and a horizontal line each from these divisions here. So from each division I have to draw a vertical line and a horizontal line. Now depending if you want a vertical or horizontal ellipse it will determine if from here you'll get a vertical line or a horizontal line. Now even if you do forget which which one you should take it will clearly show you if you're doing it wrong once you get the points since this is going to be a horizontal ellipse I would need a point somewhere here and a point somewhere there so I'm going to get a vertical line from the big one a horizontal line from the smaller circle where they intersect you get that point Again, a horizontal line from the small one, a vertical line from the larger one, and you get another point. So that quarter of the ellipse is ready. So I've got these four points there. Again, in this quarter you get a horizontal from here, a vertical from there. And that gives you another point. Horizontal from here, a vertical from there and that gives you another point. Now don't draw these bubbly circles as I'm doing them I'm just drawing them a bit wide a bit darker than I should so you can see them. So just mark them so that when you line in the ellipse later on you won't see those dots. Right? So that part will give me the points for a horizontal ellipse. Now if you wanted a vertical ellipse you would have done 
the other way around. So you get a, a horizontal line from the bigger point and a vertical line from the smaller circle. A horizontal line from the bigger circle, or a horizontal line from here and a vertical line from there. So that would have given you a different position the ellipse. So let's So that's half an ellipse. For the other half, obviously, you do the same thing. A vertical line from the bigger one, a horizontal line from the smaller one. Now in this half of the ellipse, I'm going to draw a vertical half ellipse. So that would mean that I need these points and this point here for a vertical ellipse. So you'll get something like this. Instead of taking a vertical line from the big circle, I'm going to get a horizontal line from the big circle. And as it is already on this point, I'm going to get the horizontal line from here as well. Then a vertical line from the smaller circle. Again, a vertical line from the smaller circle and a horizontal line from the bigger circle. And there, I've got that point, that point, that point, that point, that point, that point, and that point. And that gives me another half ellipse, but this time in a vertical position. Alright, this is just one of the methods of drawing the ellipse, but it's the most common use, and in my opinion, gives you the best results because the points will be equally spaced and the circles help you align your your ellipse all right so in one in one construction here i've fitted the vertical and the horizontal ellipse now what usually what we usually want with an ellipse is how to find a tangent or a normal to a point on the ellipse so if you take Let's focus on the top part of the horizontal ellipse. I'm choosing a point. So usually you're asked to find a tangent or a normal to a point on the ellipse. I'm choosing that point. And you want a tangent or a normal to it. So first thing you have to do for, for a tangent is to find the focal points of the ellipse. And the focal points are very easily done by opening the compass as wide as half of the major axis. In our case, I'm opening it 50 millimeters. I'm taking the point, taking the compass to the minor axis here, and I'm marking off two points on the major axis. There and there. So those are the two focal points. It's only a coincidence that it, that it lies exactly on the minor axis. Those should lie anywhere on the major axis. So I open the compass as wide as half the major and from the minor I marked two points on my major axis. Those are the two focal points. I've named them F1 and F2. So after you've marked off the focal points, you're going to join the lines to your point where you want your tangent constructed. Which gives you this angle here. Now if I bisect that angle using my compass, my compasses, from here I'm going to bisect it. So I'm going to mark off there and there. And then from the middle, you're doing an angle bisector. This gives me a normal. A normal, which means that that line is, is emerging at 90 degrees to this point on the ellipse. There you get a 90 degree normal. 
All right, so in cases where you want to draw a circle touching your ellipse, for instance, at that point, you have to first draw the normal to get your circle, for example, if I want a circle touching at this point with that radius, first you have to construct the norm and that will give you where to draw the circle. So you have to draw the norm at first, not just by trial and error. Now, if you want a tangent now, you need a perpendicular to that point. Now drawing a perpendicular is similar to bisecting an angle. So I'm going to open the compass as wide as I want. I'm going to mark that side and this side. Then I'm going to open it a bit more than it was previously open. I'm going to mark a mark over here and an arc over there. I'm going to switch sides from my original mark Mark it here, mark it there. This gives me the tangent to the ellipse. To that point. Alright, so that gives you the tangent. It's a very common question to get in your exams. Construction of the ellipse, the most common method using the auxiliary circles or concentric circle method and included with it would be either the tangent or the normal. Alternatively we can use the other method which is the intersecting arcs method which is also quite simple. So I'm going to draw a line for my major axis in the midpoint of that I'm going to draw a line for my main minor axis and for this method which is called the intersecting arcs method I'm going to need the focal points to, be, to start off with. So I'm going to open the compass as wide as half my major axis. From the minor axis I'm going to mark again on the major axis. That gives me my focal points. Now the distance from here to here is half the major. That is 50 in our case. So the distance from here to here and back to here is as, as wide as the major axis, that is 100. Now, in an ellipse, the distance from the focal point to anywhere on the ellipse and back to the other focal point will always equal, will always total 100 millimeters in our case, that is, will always total the major axis. In the midpoint, you get 50 and 50. So, I can choose other two lengths that make up 100 that will give me a different point on my ellipse. So I'm going to open the compass to 60 from one side of the focus there and then to make up 100 I need another 40. So from one side 60 from the other side 40. So that gives me the second point on the ellipse where these two points meet. I could use the 60 and 40 for each quarter of my ellipse. So 40 from here, 40 from here and 40 from there. I'm going to open it back to 60 which will give me another point. So you can keep on doing this for other values 70, 30, 80, 10 to give you more points. But again you have to make sure that you distance your points equally to get a good ellipse. The other method is much more neater, as in you don't have to measure out spacing. 